What's going on everybody? Jade up here. In this video I'll be going over the positioning for the off tank and veteran cloud rest plus three. This will also work with plus one or two as well. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. I will talk about the skills of my bar, the gear I'm running along with the monster set, and alternatives to the gear as well as positioning. The main thing for off tanking veteran cloud rest plus anything is positioning. Positioning with your group is key to completing this trial. While there isn't any box or adds up, the main things that you will be doing is making sure you have blood altar up, engulfing on boss, and heroic slash on boss, as well as keeping track of warhorn up times. There's five people in your group and there's no reason you should have downtime. It will also help by grabbing Horfrage, which is a mechanic Galloway does. It's a small like AoE that roams around the arena it only needs to be picked up three times. You also don't want to go into portal with Warfrost, so if you have it, wait a few seconds, then drop it before going into the portal. I slowed this part down in hopes that you will see what is going on with the Shade of Zamaja and see the mechanics I will be talking about. Once you are in the Shadow Realm, you will face north and taunt Zamaja. The Shade of Zamaja will always spawn north, so that's why you will face north when entering the portal. The reason you need to ta need a tank in the Shadow Realm is because she is still doing her basic mechanics and they will kill the DPS. She will still do her heavy attack which is a huge orb that she will throw at you and it will one shot you if you aren't blocking. She also does a beam like attack which is her light attack. The light attack will only hit you no matter which way you are facing her as long as you have taunt on her. She will also lift her hands up in the air, and at that moment you need to bash her with either crushing shock, deep breath, or just a regular bash. Reason being, if you don't, Zamasha will pick up random players and drop them from the ceiling. The longer she does this mechanic, the more fall damage players will take. So just make sure you stand close enough to get the bash off. In the Shadow Realm, Zamasha will also do a mechanic which will place a graying, glowing AOE at the center of the room and at that moment you need to turn and look for a glowing pad next to the four corners of the room. What you do is go stand on the glowing pad, hit your synergy button and it will lift you on top of the platform above you. The center AOE will explode and then you may jump down and continue tanking Zamaja. Now in plus zero, all four pads will be glowing. Plus one, three pads will be glowing. Plus two, two pads will be glowing. And plus three, only one pad will be glowing. I hope slowing this down really helped you guys out in the Shadow Realm, just so you guys can see what mechanics are going on. Now, once you are back from the Shadow Realm, a monstrosity will appear in the center of the room. Taunt the monstrosity and position her on either the mini boss that is up or on Zamaja. The monstrosities, the monstrosities horns on top of her head will glow purple and do an attack that debuffs you and increases your ultimate cost. And that's when you need to dodge roll. I have a video which I've done a long time ago which I'll drop in the description below that you can check out and have this mechanic slow down for you. Um, clarify with your raid lead beforehand on where to stack the monstrosity once the monstrosity is dead, you will then let the other tank know you will be taunting the mini boss, and in this case, it's Sororia. That way, you don't over taunt the mini. If you get the fire mechanic where three people need to stand on top of you, just call it out like so fire on mini. And that should alert the group that they need to start stacking on you. Better to say where instead of who to stack on. So here's some examples. Stack on Zamaja's tail or stack on mini. These types of callouts are short and sweet, straight to the point. This fire mechanic can happen at any moment, so just remain calm when tanking Sororia. While tanking Sororia, if you stack her like we do, we position Sororia on top of Zamaja. That way we can cleave both of them down. You then are expected to call out when Sororia is about to drop her standard and when she jumps. The way you tell when she is about to drop her standard is every other jump phase that's when she'll drop her standard. The way you can tell when she's about to jump 
is she'll lift her sword up in the air and start to turn slightly red and then she'll jump to the furthest player away. Could be the main tank or could be the healer kiter. Other than that, that's pretty much how you tank Sororia. I almost forgot to tell you guys that Chidi Sororia does two additional attacks. One is to, is like Talents where she locks numerous players into place. You can easily get out of this by activating Purify from a Templar, dodge rolling, or just waiting for the timer to run out. It lasts roughly about 5 seconds. Now, the other attack she does is a frontal cone attack that is like engulfing flames. You can easily just move out of the way of that by moving left or right. If you have talons on you, then easily just dodge roll out of it so you don't get hit by it. One pro tip though, when Sororia does drop her standard and she does any mechanics such as jumping, those attacks will be enraged and those will one shot anybody that gets in contact with those flames that, that end up jumping around. So once Sororia jumps up in the air and lands on the ground, she will then disperse four fire AoEs and they will randomly go all over the place. Now we will talk about the skills I'm running and gear. My front bar skills, skills excuse me, are Pierce Armor, Green Dragon's Blood, Engulfing Flames, Igneous Shields, Heroic Slash, with the ultimate being Woolhorn. My back bar skills are Inner Fire with the Magic Morph, Balance, Blockade, Bullet Altar, the Morph where the Synergy heals the players more, and Chains, with Magma as the ultimate. The gear I was running on this run was Dragon and Alkosh with Arthgore as the monster set. Some other sets you could run are Torogs, Ebon, and Powerful Assault. Some monster sets you could use would be Chudin, Bloodspawn, of course Earthgore, Lord Warden. Now granted these aren't all the sets or monster sets you could run. These are just the ones that help your group out more than others. I do have harmony traits on my jewelry with the last one being infused. I really like two harmony and one infuse, but you could go with whichever you prefer. There's no right or wrong traits to wear, it, and it's totally preference. I just prefer to get more resources and health back when activating blood altar and shards or orbs. As far as weapon enchants and traits go, I do like the crusher with infused weapons on both bars. And as far as attributes go, and veteran cloud rest plus anything, I'm starting to really like more Magicka than Stam. Now this is just a preference, and whatever setup you like. Here's how I manage my resources when tanking the Shade of Zamaja. What I do is immediately taunt her, and hold block while she does her attacks on me. If Earthgore procs at any time while tanking Zamaja, I heavy attack with either bar, Whichever resources I need more of. So if I need Magicka and Orthgor is procced, I'll heavy attack with my Lightning Staff. Or if I need more Stam, then I'll heavy attack with my Sword and Board Bar. If I have Magma up, I'll usually pop a Pot when I need it. And if I do not have Magma up, I'll usually save my Pot until the very last moment to pop it. If you need to pop Magma while in the Shadow Realm, by all means pop that Magma. Because if you die, then the portal team dies, and then you wipe the group. Better play safe than sorry. The shadow team should be quick in killing the crystals, but sometimes that isn't always the case. Shit can happen. So, that's why I like to play it safe while in the shadow realm. The only time I like to hit balance to get Magicka back is when I activate the synergy to go on top of the platform. Because there, I take no damage, or... If a crystal is nearby, or Zamaja is close, you could just sit there and heavy attack with your lightning staff to get Magicka back. And that's how I do the Shadow Realm. Pay close attention to Zamaja's health before entering the Shadow Realm. Because when you come back from the Shadow Realm, it's a good idea to know which mini boss you will be grabbing after the monstrosity dies. The mini bosses do spawn at the same percent each time. So, 75% of Zamaja's health? So Warrior will spawn, and then 50% for Reliquin and 25% for Galloway, or Galloway, whatever you say. 
Uh, if you have a player, DC, or need some time to recover, you could stop DPSing Zamaja before those percents, but keep in mind, all other mechanics will still happen. The orbs will still spawn, and so on and so forth. Uh, starting around 60%, there will be a cone coming from the portal on both the Shadow Realm and the Real Realm. If you get hit by the cone coming from the portal, you will get sent to the other realm. So, example, if you're in the Shadow Realm, you will get hit by the cone, you'll get sent back to the Real Realm, and vice versa. Now for Reliquin. What you need to know is she does a few mechanics that you need to watch out for, but only one you really need to call out, which is her heavy attack. When she goes to heavy attack, she will spin her weapon like she's a karate master, and then jump slightly in the air and slam down quickly, sending out little shock balls out, stunning anyone that gets hit by them. You can block the mitigation, but you will still get stunned either way. We tend to tank Reliquin away from Zamaja because that heavy attack she does can kill the main tank if the main tank can't see the shock balls. The shock balls, excuse me. Basically what could happen is Zamaja could be doing a heavy attack on the main tank at the same time Reliquin could be doing her heavy attack on the off tank. And if the main tank doesn't see the shock balls and gets stunned, he'll die by that combo. She also teleports to the furthest player away from her and leaves behind an AoE of lightning damage which lasts roughly anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds. She also does a cone like attack that if you are in it, when it goes off, it will knock you back, making you drop your block. So, just move out of the way of that cone attack. Her last mechanic you need to watch out for is her channeling attack. What she does is focus one player, and whoever is in that line of sight when targeting that player, all those players will start to get channeled. She can potentially have up to 12 group members channeled at a time. At this time, all you need to do is just bash her with the preferred methods I stated previously. If you let that mechanic go off, it will knock you knock all players back affected by the channel and deal some damage. The last mechanic that I have not discussed yet is the bar swap mechanic. Here's what happens. Static will start to surround your body and yes, it is hard to see. So pay close attention. Once that happens, you have roughly 3 seconds to get to your back bar. Once on your back bar, you will then have a huge blue AoE around you, and then there will be an indicator above your head showing that you have the bar swap mechanic. The ways to tell if you need to bar swap is 1. The huge blue AoE around your person, or your screen will turn slightly blue, or the last way to tell is you will still have the static coming from your body. For those that are colorblind, I am unaware if ESO has color is colorblind friendly, but if you are on console, there is an icon that shows up and it looks like a sword counting down from 10 seconds. And next to that icon is another icon that looks like a person that has static effect on them. The shorter the time gets to zero, so from 10 to zero, the more damage it does. So be sure not to swap bars too quickly. Wait until that icon is gone from your debuff bar. Now at 40% of Zamaja's health, Zamaja will start to spawn creepers. Creepers are a large tentacle type creature that shoots a vein at one random player. If the player is hit by the vine, it will stop them from moving. And if you don't dodge roll the vine after a few seconds of being hit by the vine, you will not be able to use any abilities. These creepers will spawn throughout the rest of the fight, along with every other mechanic that you have been faced with at this point. The creepers do tend to spawn away from the group sometimes, so just be aware of where they spawn, because if you have no ads or mini bosses up, you may run to that creeper and debuff it, that way it dies that much quicker. Now from 40% till 25% is a good amount of time to really get used to all the mechanics happening at once, such as orbs, war frost, fire, bar swap, and creeper. Now here's the kill order we do. We go by orbs, 
Creepers, monstrosities, minis, then Zamasha. That's our kill order. So if you get orbs, then immediately get a creeper. Target the orbs first, then kill the creeper. If you don't kill the orbs quick enough, they will shoot towards random players and explode, sending out bead-like orbs across the ground, stunning anyone hit by them. And I do apologize for just now going over this mechanic. Also, I did forget that the kiting mechanic, the main tank, and the kite healer have to worry about starts at 80%. So anyways, back to the kill order. Your raid lead should be calling out what to kill when certain mechanics pop up. As long as you all DPS together as a group, things should die relatively quick. Again, Galloon spawns at 25% of Zamasha's health. So let's go over some of the mechanics that he does. The first mechanic we'll talk about is the ground ice AOE he spawns around his body. This lasts for about 10 to 15 seconds and the AOE does follow him around as you will see shortly. The next mechanic you need to watch out for is the ground placed AOE. Now this AOE is unique as it's not a typical AOE you may be used to. It's a circled ground AOE placed on the ground with the center cut out. The only damage that you can take from this mechanic is the outline of the ground AOE. So basically the outline of the circle is the only time you can take damage from it if you run over it. And it is a stationary AOE so you can easily move the boss away from it if you feel the need to. And the next mechanic he does is he teleports to the furthest player away. Once he teleports that, per that player furthest away, he will then start to grow an AOE around him. And after about 5 seconds, it will shoot spiked ice shards from the ground, hitting anything in the AOE. This is an easily avoidable attack. Just move out of the growing AOE and you should be fine. The next mechanic he does is he'll put his sword on the ground and take a knee. What this mechanic does is it spawns little ice AOEs around the arena. And at this time, all you need to do is just bash, bash him as one of the preferred methods stated previously. Another mechanic he does is he'll stop in place, lift one hand in the air, and target three random players. And they'll get a, a small a, a big AOE underneath their, fit, underneath their feet. And after about five seconds, an ice meteor will come crashing down on top of those three random players. Just shield up and hold block to mitigate the damage. If you're a stamp character, just hit Vigor and hold block. So those three players need to spread out from each other. If they don't, it will cause more damage to them. You cannot bash him during this phase, so you just have to wait. The final mechanic he does is a heavy attack. Just hold block during this and you'll be fine. There isn't really anything you need to call out during Galloon's uptime, but once he goes down, that's it, and you don't have to worry about him anymore. Once the Maja's health reaches about 3 million, he will then go into execute phase. He will stop doing whatever he's doing and teleport to the south of the room and summon his shade from the shadow room. And at this time, you need to, excuse me, at this time you need to kill all ads, orbs, creepers that are up and get reses if needed. The best time to get reses or when the portal team comes back from the shadow realm. Other than that, I'd suggest picking your res times wisely. What we like to do is stack on top of the person resing, so if fire or anything happens, they are covered with heals and players are already there if we need to stack on them for the fire mechanic. Last we will talk about execute phase. What we will do is stack into teams, a right team and a left team. What some groups have been doing, which we will discuss since we are doing the strat in the video, is we have one tank in the group and one tank outside the group. The reason being is you have one tank outside of the group so the healer can stay in the group and not have to kite the AoE that the Zabaja does anymore. Now during execute there will be two ice AoEs and two fire AoEs. You need to be aware of that when going into execute. What we like to do is if both fire mechanics are on the same side, 
the person that calls fire moves to the opposite side. That way there is no confusion on who's going to the opposite side. Keep comms clear during execute phase. Keep callouts short and sweet like we discussed earlier. If you are the tank that is out of the group kiting the ground based AOE like the main tank does, all you will be doing is laying down blood altar once the AOE is gone and you will be working on trying to stay alive. A quick tip, once you are done kiting come back to the group but slightly behind the group so that way you can get some heals and still be able to kite when needed. If you are the tank that's in the group you will be duffing be you excuse me you'll be debuffing Zamaja such as applying engulfing flames heroic slash and trying to keep the crusher uptime along with getting bashes on Zamaja like you had done in the shadow realm and you will be laying down blood altar every time baneful mark is done one last mechanic that happens in execute is an annoying mechanic called baneful mark what this does is it targets six random players and debuffs them like the monstrosity does if you don't dodge his attack. Baneful Mark knocks their health super low and increases their ultimate. All you need to do is stay calm, hit igneous shields but while you're hitting green dragon's blood, blood altar, and orbs. So basically you'll be doing igneous shield, green dragon's blood, igneous shield, activating altar, green dragon's blood, activating orbs that way you are getting the ma the mending buff from igneous shields other than that that is pretty much it to tanking vet cloud rest, veteran cloud rest plus three i hope this guide has helped you uh, if you have any questions comments or concerns feel free to leave a comment down below if this video helped you or your group out i would very much appreciate a like or a sub Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. I'm going to let a song play out for the rest of this, and then I'll cut the song out and let the voices uh, play out so you guys can hear the last couple couple minutes of the execute. That creeper off. Up to Sharon, stack. Okay. Hey, we'll go on boss now. I'm gonna die if somebody doesn't heal me. No, Sam. I got up. it. Ops, ops, ops. You're my heart. I can't heal myself. <coughs> I'm really sorry. Okay. We are, we are not going down anymore. Target monstrosity. There is a creeper at the back. Creeper just spawned. Watch boss box. No death to boss box, no death to creeper. Fire on monstrosity. Monstrosity is almost dead, just one person. I... Everybody else then. Alright. Get ready for orbs now. Stack. There are orbs. Stack. One more million and we gotta execute. Is it creeper up? Hey, get, get the other groups. Right. Stay calm and do this, guys. I'll face her away from her dead body. Yep. Okay. Left and right groups. Back on center. Get it. It's my siphon. There are blood altars are down. Oh, ox. My siphon. Orbs out. Orbs left. Frost to the left. frost on group to the left. There's two of them. There's one ice. Oh, frost on the back of the left group. David swap at you. I will swap to the You ready for baneful? Oh my god. David. Ventura, your barrier. What? I got tight. Pushing. Fine, uh, just kill then, orbs. Get the red if you can. Okay. I'm on the right, Resin. Ready for a baneful? 
Creeper, creeper. Ice in the middle. Kill the creepers, guys. It's very important. Soon they overwhelm us. Good. For us on the back, I've left. Get it? Get it. Points out. Um, Stay tight in our groups, guys. Stay together, yeah. stay together. On your Four left side. Twister, you're on the wrong side. You're on left. I need the sheet A on the left. Oops. Resing. I'm kiting while Alex is down. Hang on. I have four frost on last, dropping it. Don't worry. Resing. It's my siphon next. Okay, hey, four more. Oh, he's got the left. Yeah, now I have a backup side for him. Oh, Siri, uh, fire right. One group. Watch for a baneful. You must be at full stretch to vanquish those shadows. My horn's out. Someone from the left, take the, take the orbs. Creepers out. Creeper and orbs, kill orbs first. Stay, 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 stay. Everything's Get fine. ready for baneful. Orbs on left. Orbs on left. Orbs on the left side. Oh, left side, shield up. I can't. It's a creeper on the left. So good. Yep, creeper at the back. Left. Make sure our blood altars are down. Creepers and orbs again. There's a creeper, um, left side. That's the last creeper we are killing. Actually, no, just ignore the creeper. Painful. My siphon. Now, I don't have siphon. I do. I'll keep it for the next one. I'll do my horn. Spears. Oh, oh. Four frost on the left, pick it up. Twist it, go left. No, 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 no. I'm yeah. left, I'm left. We're good, oh, just kill boss. Yeah, kill boss. Calm down, kill boss. Good job, guys. You did it. Good job. Oh my god, I got it. Yeah. Right. Oh my fucking god. Good job. Holy shit. Oh, Good shit, guys. Okay. Uninstalling. Oh my god. Holy shit, guys. Everyone. Uh, oh my god. Uninstalling. Uh, can we take a picture, please? <laughs>